Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. So I mentioned that I might want to try anodizing. And so, well, here it is. Uh, this video is about me trying anodizing. But not only am I going to uh, show you my attempts of anodizing in this video, I also want to show off uh, another uh, part that I had Metal 3 printed by PCBWay, which is going to be the CPU block. And uh, I'm using a, a EK uh, CPU block base, uh, super shiny. Uh, you can get those fairly cheap, uh, those like spare parts for the blocks. And then I designed my own uh, custom top plate. As for what I'm doing, it's kind of special. And I really think this is super cool. Uh, maybe it's just me, but uh, it has an inlet like any regular CPU block. But then instead of having a, another outlet where you connect another tube with an O-ring, it just has a bunch of holes. So uh, the oil is going to come in and just spray everywhere afterwards, which I think is uh, kind of cool because uh, that's like the opposite of what you want, would want in any water cooling loop. Uh, but these two parts uh, then uh, just bolt together and make up the CPU block which goes on top and I think looks really cool. So on that note, I also want to give a huge thanks to PCBWay for not only uh, sending me uh, this uh, beautiful part, but also making the RAMS heat spreaders and sponsoring these videos. They really help me out a lot. And if you want to get anything Metal 3D printed, make sure to go check out PCBWay's uh, manufacturing services. They also have a bunch of other 3D printing techniques that they're offering. And of course, hence the name, uh, they also make beautiful PCBs that I've used many times that I can highly recommend. So make sure to check out PCBWay, link down below. But before we uh, get into uh, finishing this piece off, uh, I want to kind of tell you more about my anodizing setup and uh, what I've uh, tried so far and how far I got. The main thing that you need for to do the actual anodizing is sulfuric acid, or more commonly known as battery acid. And at least around here, it's actually fairly uh, easy to obtain this at any kind of auto parts uh, or motor parts store. And uh, I was able to just buy these online for an actually decent price. Just had to buy uh, enough to uh, qualify for the minimum order quantity. So I have definitely enough battery asset for many years to come. Uh, but uh, it was fairly inexpensive and no problem at all. Then the other thing you might want uh, to prepare your parts or if you want to anodize parts that have already been anodized is sodium hydroxide or more commonly known uh, as caustic soda or lye. And uh, in some places you will be able to find this as drain cleaner in your cleaning aisle, uh, but I have absolutely no luck. Um, but I was able to uh, get some at my local pharmacy. And then finally, the thing that actually took me the longest to find is proper anodizing dye uh, and not buying it uh, by the 10 kilos. Uh, I could not find any Swiss suppliers of it uh, and most suppliers in Europe that are based out of the EU will not ship to Switzerland very easily or it is super expensive. But I found this one store out of Germany which is called Electronic Things. And uh, they sell all kinds of anodizing stuff. So if you live in Germany or anywhere in the EU, you might want to check them out. Uh, they have uh, also different like starter sets and whatnot. But they sell a bunch of different anodizing dye for uh, really cheap actually. And uh, I was able to get those from there and they ship super reasonably as well to Switzerland. The only other things that you uh, need is of course a power supply. And you might want like a thermistor or a a temperature sensor of some sort to be able to uh, test the temperature of the dye as you want to have those above uh, 50 Celsius when actually using them. So you will also need like a burner plate for that. Uh, but those are things that can be quite commonly obtained. Before uh, going right in with my fancy 3D printed parts, I of course uh, did a bit of a test part and while it did not anodize properly, I'm pretty sure that I had bad contact because the aluminum wire, uh, which of course you'll also need, I got the big spool here uh, from China or you can also get smaller spools from the hardware store. And the aluminum wire anodized beautifully and the color that I was able to get, uh, by the way I'm going for a kind of a copper color for these parts, uh, was super beautiful. Um, and uh, I kept it in there for a bit longer, then it turned more to a reddish. But uh, in, as an intermediate step, it looked just like copper wire, uh, which is really cool. And then the next step was uh, to put in uh, my little heat spreaders. And well, as you can see here, uh, it did not quite turn out uh, like I wanted. Uh, these are not dyed. 
uh, this is straight how it came out of the anodizing. And if you don't know enough about anodizing, this is not supposed to happen. There's supposed to look uh, just aluminum colored uh, kind of silver uh, straight out of the anodizing. So something uh, clearly uh, did not uh, quite go right and uh, I'm pretty sure that the culprit is that uh, the aluminum used uh, for metal 3D printing is not pure aluminum. There are also other metals in there. And uh, one of those other metals must have reacted in a different way to kind of almost create, create this uh, kind of black oxide looking thing. It looks really cool. Uh, it's like, like a dark gray um, uh, it even accepts dye somewhat, like I tried with one of them putting it in the dye and it turned into like a dark brown. So if you wanted to anodize black, it would probably work perfectly fine. You can just dunk in a black dye, make it even darker and then seal it up and I think it uh, should work beautifully. But for my case it did not quite work out. Uh, that brown did not look too appealing. So I tried uh, putting it back into the sodium hydroxide to kind of uh, get rid of that uh, red coloring and that worked beautifully. It also colored my uh, sodium hydroxide solution red of course. Uh, but then after kind of uh, brushing it off, uh, a bunch of the dark gray came also off and it's now more of a, like a like a gum metal, metal uh, kind of gray which also looks super cool. Um, while this is still not the steampunk stuff that I've been looking for, uh, I think uh, it's already a lot uh, better fitting to the theme and if maybe I can polish up some of the areas and have some of the areas this more a darker uh, color then it could also work uh, since I'm pretty sure I will not be able to anodize these parts uh, properly in the way that I had hoped. Don't fret, uh, this is not going to stop me from uh, doing some proper anodizing in this video apart from just aluminum wire used to hold the parts. So I have uh, already taken off the heat sinks from the motherboard and uh, stripped them of their natural anodizing in the sodium hydroxide bath. Uh, just put them in for like 15 minutes, stir them around a bit and it came out beautifully. Uh, the anodizing came out beautifully. Uh, there are some uh, inconsistent spots, so I think I'm going to give it a light sanding. It's also a rather uh, dull surface, so I want to give it a bit of a fine sanding to maybe uh, polish it up a little bit more. And then I'm pretty sure that these will anodize beautifully since they were anodized before as well. And I also have uh, the chipset heatsink here. So I think these parts uh, should be able to uh, really achieve that beautiful anodized look and then for the other parts uh, I don't even know what that technique would be called leave a comment down below if you know uh, the chemical explanation to this or what it's called um, but uh, I think this could also work and I'm uh, definitely gonna seal these as well I have not boiled them yet uh, because I want to just do both of them at the same time but I think it should still uh, work quite well Well, that was quite the adventure. In the end, I did manage to uh, get some parts uh, properly anodized, um, mainly the heat sinks from the motherboard. And since they were previously anodized, I had uh, no worries about that. And uh, after I got the proper contact, they anodized beautifully. Now, sadly, on one of them uh, during boiling in the end, uh, quite a lot of the color uh, washed out. So they are very uneven. Like uh, either one of them could work, uh, Something in between the two would probably be perfect, uh, 
but uh, for now I'll leave it like that and I didn't want to like uh, get everything out again after I put it away to uh, change it again. But if I do some other anodizing before I submerge this thing in oil I might uh, redo these two parts and just to get them a bit uh, closer to match each other. As for uh, the other 3D printed parts, uh, no luck uh, in getting them uh, properly anodized. But uh, what I settled on is this kind of black chrome aesthetic, uh, which uh, I think also looks really cool. It's a lot darker than the original uh, bare aluminum, uh, which was just a bit too bright and silvery for this build. But this darker, uh, more rustic uh, kind of black chrome fits in a lot better already in the steampunk scene. Now I did have one issue that one of the uh, ram stick uh, covers it just w for at first uh, first time didn't properly anodize uh, maybe it had bad contact or something and then I redid it and it came out great except it had a complete two tone one side was this uh, kind of dark grayish as all of the other ones while the other one turned out more of a brown uh, completely different and I could not really get it uh, close. Uh, after uh, after anodizing when they were their like uh, dark grayish color, I dunked them for a couple seconds in the lye solution and then washed it off. Uh, this uh, gave a bit of an in between, uh, where especially the high spots uh, had their dark colors that they washed off, and uh, then after that they polished to a beautiful uh, sheen. Uh, while I tried polishing before uh, without. Uh, putting it into acid again and that also looked really cool it was this kind of like dark gray almost black shininess and I'll definitely keep that in mind for a different project possibly it looks really cool uh, but for this it just didn't quite work so I put it in the acid again really quickly and then polish it up in the end and it looks quite nice especially like uh, how the CPU block itself uh, came out uh, it really pops and I'm very happy that I did the rivets in this kind of uh, positive shape this time as they really shine and uh, in retrospect I kind of wish I had done the rivets this way on the RAM heat spreaders as well as that would have just made it pop a bit more even though it might have been a bit more of a pain to uh, sand. And now before I show you some b-roll of the finished uh, products uh, let me quickly tell you about my merch. Uh, I have merch, uh, you can check it out down below. I have this uh, Cry PC shirt, I have two with my logo and uh, slightly different designs. Uh, I also have uh, mugs like this one and there's a slightly different one. And there's also a poster version of the Cry PC uh, design. And so if you're interested in any of that, make sure to go and check it out below. And with that, thanks for watching. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And here's the promised montage.